Good morning, everyone. I am now live on Tribe Sober Facebook page. I hope my internet holds up. Um, okay, great. I'm starting. I'm live. My little chat today is called Conversation with Janice. And we're going to talk about my story and how I became sober. So let me start. Okay, so I've been sober for five and a bit years and um, going on for six. My anniversary is the 26th of December, which says a lot, Boxing Day, the day after Christmas. And yeah, every Christmas and Boxing Day, I used to drink a lot. So let me start from the very beginning. The theme of my little chat today is yin and yang of being sober. I'm very into the Tao, you know, the T-A-O. I'm very into all this um, philosophy about being a good person and being kind to animals and plants. And I'm very into nature and the environment. And that is the thing that keeps me all together. Someone actually said to me the other day that because I don't have a mother figure in my life, I've turned towards mother nature. And I think that's quite correct. Okay, so let's look at the yin and yang. Does anybody know the symbol of yin and yang? This is it. Black and white and the two dots. It's a very symbolic thing. The yin and yang is all about the male energy versus the female energy, the active versus the passive, the light versus the dark, the dominating versus the creative, the strong versus the dark, the movement versus the stillness, hot and cold, expanding and contracting. So these are all the forces in the world that drive us and all the opposites. And each contrast has an opposite, but they actually work together and we need to find the meeting place. So let me read you what the Tao is. Under heaven, all can see beauty as beauty only because there is ugliness. All can know good as good only because there is evil. Therefore, having and not having arise together. Difficult and easy complement each other. Long and short contrast each other. High and low rest upon each other. Voice and sound harmonize each other. Front and back follow one another. Therefore, the sage goes about doing nothing, teaching no talking. The 10,000 things rise and fall without cease, creating yet not possessing, working yet not taking credit. Work is done, then forgotten. Therefore, it lasts forever. So everything happens in the now. All these things we worry about don't count. So let's go on to my story now. Okay, so when I grew up, I grew up in a house of drinking. My parents were socialites. They drank for every single occasion there was to drink for, whether it was a happy occasion, a sad occasion, a frustrating occasion, or an angry occasion, you just reached for a drink and you drank. And when people came to our house, they were offered a drink, not tea or coffee. No way, are you mad? So whenever I brought friends home, they were offered a drink and things turned into a huge party. And my dad would sit up till two in the morning with my friends and my sister's friends, and it was just chaos. That's how I grew up. But I had a very happy childhood because we were brought up to be independent and free. We were always running around the neighborhood for miles and miles and miles on our own while our parents had parties and you know did their thing. So we were independent. Um, when I got to be a teenager, I had my first drink and my folks tried to encourage us to be good wine drinkers and to taste the wine and look at the label and say all those lovely words about the wine. And we did a trip to the Cape where we learned about wine. And from there on, um, I didn't drink that much actually until I got to university. Now, when I grew up, I was an introvert. I was the middle child. I was a very quiet, little quiet thing. I did very well at school. I always got the first prize. I swam well. My sister and I were in the A team. So we were achievers. Um, and when I got to varsity, I did quite well. You know, I worked very hard. 
but we partied and that's when my drinking really took off. I mean, we, we only drank Fridays and Saturdays, but we drank a lot and we used to fall and hurt ourselves and do all crazy things. And um, then after university, I needed to get a job. So I worked in bush lodges. And as you can imagine, these five-star lodges had lots of alcohol. So us staff would drink um, with the guests and also we'd have our own little parties here and there, huge ones. I mean, dancing on the pub and falling all over in the garden and we had fun. And then after my bush work in the bush lodges, I went traveling for two years and there was spates in my travel where I didn't drink at all. I mean, I was in Taiwan for a long time teaching English and I didn't have one drink and I didn't miss it. But when I was in Israel working on the Moshav, we used to drink vodka that made us black out. It was bad. So, you know, I had these ups and downs. And um, when I came back from my travels, I got a job on the Witness newspaper in Maritzburg. And I used to drink um, with friends, you know, journalists are known for it. And um, I met two girls that I lived with on a, in a small holding and we had huge parties and you know, I did crazy things with my car and I was fearless, absolutely fearless. Then I um, joined the Endangered Wildlife Trust and we were very sociable when we had workshops. We always had a lot to drink. And I remember during those years when I worked for the EWT, I crashed two work buckies because I took them out one night for a drink and I crashed the one. The one was such a bad crash, I actually got pulled out with the jaws of life. And I had to go to hospital for the whole next day to see if I was all right. I mean, they did a brain scan and everything. Can you believe it? What a waste of resources. And um, I also crashed another bucky just coming home one night on a dirt road. And I had to hide the fact that I'd been drinking. So there was all these things that kept coming along. And um, I lived in the Midlands, always alone. My whole life I lived alone. Even if I had boyfriends, I never moved in with them. And I had cats and I always had my wine, always had my wine. And I was always fit and healthy. You know, I was always running and doing yoga and offsetting the bad with the good. So what else can I say? My sister, um, eventually her alcohol drinking turned into drugs and she fell off the rails and she ended up in rehab in a low sort of income neighborhood in Durban. She went to one of those rough rehabs. And she came right, and she's been sober for nearly more than 10 years. And she's also very spiritual now. She's tapped into her inner good, and she's um, into nature and starting a healing retreat. So, yeah, what's my path now? Let's see. I married at the age of 38, so I was alone all that time. I had my first child at 38, my second child at 42. And I remember after that, when my children were toddlers and things, I was in my 40s and the wine drinking started getting quite bad. Um, not that I drank more, but my hormones came into play and they started tipping me off the edge with the wine. I would have like wine maybe four or five nights a week and then I'd have a bottle, probably a bottle, four big glasses, a bottle. And then if we had friends around, it would be a bit more. Or if we had Christmas, it would be a bit more. And, you know, that was the pattern. And then in my late 40s, I also realized that I was having blackouts and uh, little ones. You know, what did I say last night? And who did I SMS? And then the final straw came that Christmas when I overdid it with the in-laws and uh, I got bored with all the coffee drinking. So I decided to drink wine and woke up in bed wondering what had happened that day before. And um, yeah, so let me get on to the sober part. The next day, the 26th of December, 2015, I stopped drinking and I used willpower and I really knew I had to stop. I also am a very healthy person, so I chose the path of health. And I went into that fully because we are all or nothing people as drinkers, I am. I um, made kombuchu. I went on the vegetable diet. And so all I eat now is vegetables, fruits, nuts, seeds, um, the odd bit of bread. I'm an intermittent faster. I do everything healthily. I do a lot of walking. 
And the only thing that really brings me peace and lifts my endorphins and my dopamine is walking, nature, yoga, my work, my children. But if I don't get out for a walk every single day, I get quite depressed. So I need to do that for myself. And I have to get into nature or else I'll get depressed. Take a tip from me, nature works. So that's what I do to keep sane is I keep myself busy and um, being healthy and I work very hard. I've got several jobs. So I blog for Janet. I write lesson plans for a private school. I also tutor children of Afrikaans and I do little things on the side just to bring in interest money. Yeah, so um, there's so many things that I've learned on this journey. The yin and yang of getting sober is about the contrast we go through. So if we were always supposed to be happy, we would never appreciate the happiness. We wouldn't actually know how to gauge the happiness. That's my philosophy. So in life, we have ups and downs. When you have a real downer, you get so bogged down in that downer and you feel so sorry for yourself. But when you come out of it, you feel so on a high and you know that life's still worth living and you can carry on. And that's what sobriety is all about. It's it's about not giving up. It's about looking for all the highs in different ways. Be innovative. A lot of you listening to this today are probably feeling uncomfortable with your drinking. You're probably thinking, mm, I'm drinking too much. I feel unhealthy. I feel puffy. I just don't like what I'm doing to myself. And it's true. When we drink, we hide. We hide away from our emotions. We hide away from the life that's bugging us. We hide away from people who are in our space and we don't express ourselves. And the drinking is a curtain. Um, when I became sober, I actually put up a whole big new curtain around me because I hadn't realized that I didn't have any boundaries. And so when I was drinking, I used the wine to hide away from people because everyone was treading on my boundaries because I hadn't stated my boundaries. And that's what you need to do, is state your boundaries. So now that I've been sober six years, I've realized I can have boundaries. I will work at night if I want to. I will escape people if I want to. I will socialize when I feel like it. And if people are in my space in, at home here, my husband or my children, then I can say to them, get out of my kitchen. I am tired. Let me have a break. And you need to be specific about your boundaries and put them up and then you will feel sane. And the other thing I've learned is um, a lot of us people who drink are introverts. We do like being alone. We have been drinking alone, but it does us no good to always be alone, especially with the drinking. So even though you're an introvert, try and connect. And that is why we have Tribe Sober. So Tribe Sober is a very good platform to connect with like-minded people. And when I did that, I saved myself. I have friends here in Tribe Sober, and I don't even want to go to places where there's alcohol. I'm not very into alcohol or people who drink, and that's my thing. So I don't judge them. I just steer clear. So um, I don't know if there's anything else that I really want to talk about. It's just that when you have the yin and the yang, Remember what the Tao says. Difficult and easy, complement each other. Long and short, contrast each other. Front and back, follow one another. You don't have to always be happy and you don't have to let the wine depress you and bring you down. Get rid of it. Start something else in your life. Set yourself some goals and set yourself free. That's all I say. Anyway, so I have just started my coaching um, path uh, and using the tools that I have um, found used for me, useful for me, and I'm using my own experience. And I did a very good course through UACT, which is a um, recovery coaching team. And I would love to help anyone out there who needs a bit of guidance with their new sobriety. So catch me on Tribe Sober and read my latest blogs. Check it out. Have a lovely Saturday, all of you. Bye.